peace. I'm guessing just about all of us would say, man, we want a little more peace in our life. So in this video, we are going to take a look at what is the source of a life of peace. I'm John Whitaker. This is the five minute Bible study and we try to give Bible for everyday life because we believe Bible teaching ought to be blue jeans theology. And if that sounds like something that would be helpful to you, then why don't you go ahead and click subscribe right now. Maybe even click the little bell icon so you can get notifications every time I release a new video. I try to do that every week on Thursday. And I would love to hear from you how maybe you have experienced the peace of God in your life. You can note that in the comments below. All right, let's jump right into the passage we want to look at today. The reality is, is a lot of us live with, a, with a feelings of stress or we're, we're worried or we're anxious. And I'm not talking about the kind of anxiety that comes from panic attacks or anxiety disorders. I'm just talking about the normal daily stress, worry, anxiety that a lot of us feel. And the text that I want to look at today, I think, speaks in such a clear, simple way to helping us understand that there are things we can do, there are actions we can choose that will actually help us experience the peace of God. Um, in fact, this passage actually highlights three actions we can choose that results in peace. Take a look at what it says. Philippians chapter 4, picking up in verse 4. Philippians 4, 4 through 7 says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say it, rejoice. That's the first action. And notice it's a command. It says rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Uh, that doesn't mean feel happy. That means Choose to make Jesus your joy. He's the thing you celebrate. He is the one you get excited about. You place your joy in Him. And you celebrate Him, His wisdom, His beauty, His graciousness. You celebrate what He's accomplished for you by loving you to death and forgiving your sins and giving you a great and glorious future. You rejoice in Him. You celebrate in Him. He is the source of your joy. He is the focal point of your joy. So you choose to celebrate and rejoice in Him. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. That's action number one. Action number two, the next verse says this. Um, verse five says, Let your forbearing spirit be known to all. The Lord is near. The Lord is at hand. So let your forbearing spirit, what is a forbearing spirit? Well, it's your gentle spirit, your ability to put up with, your ability to, to not just get irritated and angry and um, worked up about so many things. And the reality is we live in a world where people are going to annoy us, they're going to bother us, they're going to irritate us, right? Drivers are going to cut you off. Um, co-workers are going to be annoying. That's going to happen. And he says, you choose to have a gentle, forbearing spirit that says, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to just put up with all of that. I'm not going to get uh, upset. I'm not going to get irritated. I'm not going to get annoyed easily. Why? Because the Lord's near. The Lord's at hand. He'll take care of me. He's my protector. He's my defender. He's my good, faithful friend. So the Lord is near. So let your forbearing spirit be known to all. That's action number two. And then action number three in Philippians 4, 6 is this. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, um, but by prayer and supplication. Supplication is just a big Bible word for really asking God for things. So prayer is just a general word for talking to God, living in partnership or relationship with God. Prayer and supplication, here's the action. Let your requests be made known to God. Let your requests be made known to God. Please hear this, follower of Jesus. It is okay and good to actually ask God for things, to communicate your needs to God. There's more to prayer than that, but that's not like a bad or inappropriate form of prayer. So if, if you have needs, you set those needs before God. You let your requests be made known to God. And verse 6, we skipped over this phrase, says you do so with thanksgiving. You thank God for who He is. You thank God for the way He's cared for you in the past. You thank God for His good gifts to you and the things you already have. It is just a fact of life that the more thankful we are, the more joyful we are, and the more peaceful we are. So uh, let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. And now you get the result. Now you get the, the answer. Look at verse 7. It says this, And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension. 
which goes beyond what uh, people can actually understand or expect all on their own. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will, listen, guard your hearts and mind, will set up camp, a protective camp around your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And so God's very own peace will guard your life. That is the secret to a life of peace. You rejoice in the Lord. You're forbearing with other people. You ask God to take care of your needs and you do so with thanksgiving. And the peace of God will set up camp and guard your hearts and mind and fill you with peace. All right, thanks for checking out this video and I hope that's encouraging and helpful to you. And if you find that kind of stuff encouraging, man, I'd love to hear how it's encouraging to you in the comments below. I'd love it if you would also subscribe to this video so that you don't miss any other episodes like it. Here's another video that might be encouraging to you. Check that one out as well. And if you want more of this kind of teaching, I also have a podcast called The Bible in Life. You can just find that on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for The Bible in Life. You can check that out. I release a new podcast every Tuesday. All right, we'll see you next time on The 